Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about the deaerator. Okay, so this is very very important video. If you want to learn about the heating system, if you want to learn about the steam generating system like boiler or if you are working in a off site or if you are working in a plant, whether you are a process engineer, chemical engineer, mechanical engineer, or instrumentation engineer, electrical engineer, this topic is very very important for you to learn about the what is deaerator. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the what is deaeration process, like types of deaeration process, why is deaerator required, what is the function of deaerator, then we will discuss about the introduction of the deaerator, types of the deaerators, working principle of the deaerators then also we will talk about the chemical or the oxygen scavengers we will discuss about and the standards we will discuss about the deaerator design right so let's start the video with what is a deaeration process see here the word is de and aeration okay it means that somehow you are removing the air or gases okay F means this is the process in which you will remove something okay remove you will remove the gases because the aeration with respect to air deaeration means you are removing the air kind of you can understood like that right okay so what is the deaeration process so deaeration is a critical process okay primarily used in the steam generating systems okay means this is the part of the boiler okay and why we use the deaeration process to remove the dissolved gases okay the dissolved gases means your oxygen your carbon dioxide from the boiler feed water okay and this boiler feed water after that will go into the boiler and then your steam will generate right okay this removal is essential to prevent corrosion in boiler system why because there is the oxygen as well as the carbon dioxide okay and thereby extending their lifespan and maintain efficiency if you will remove these gases so what will happen that simply its efficiency will increase or maintain and the lifespan of the entire system will be extended okay in an industry there are several types of the deviators which you can come across and every deviator designed based on the process conditions right so we will discuss about it okay different different types of the deviators and their mechanism also in this video and see there are two types of the deaeration process mainly occurs in a plant the first one is your chemical deaeration and the thermal deaeration simply in a thermal deaeration you are using the heat or you will use the heat in the chemical deaeration you will use some chemicals to proceed with the or to enhance the deaeration process right both are the distinct method to remove the dissolved gases particularly your oxygen and carbon dioxide from the feed water okay so first one is your thermal deaeration if i talk about so it utilizes the heat to remove the dissolved gases from the feed water and the process relies on the two key principles the first one is your henry's law that we will discuss as well as the temperature effect means in a uh, in a thermal deviation the temperature plays a very important role as well as the henry's law applies here okay so what will what is the henry's law then the second one is your chemical deviation the chemical deviation means you are adding some chemicals to the feed water to react with and remove dissolved gases right so mainly if we see if you are working as a process engineer and you prepare the uh, boiler pnid okay or steam generating pnid then you will see the dosing system is there okay the dosing system is there and in that dosing system there is a package item of the pumps okay mainly that the, those pumps are uh, your reciprocating pump okay positive displacement pumps which we use for the chemical deaeration and the common oxygen scavengers like sodium sulfide or hydrazine we use there and then that are injected directly into the steam drum 
दिस केमिकल रिएक्ट विद द डिजोल्व ऑक्सीजन टू फॉर्म एन नॉन कोरोजिव कंपाउंड एंड इफेक्टिवली रिड्यूस द अमाउंट ऑफ फ्री ऑक्सीजन इन द सिस्टम एंड इट प्रिवेंट अवर सिस्टम फ्रॉम द कोरोजन Here simply you can see the difference between the thermal deaeration and chemical deaeration. Okay, so and we have already discussed about it the method and the efficiency. Okay, mainly in thermal deaeration, if the volume is large, so we use the thermal deaeration, and the chemical deaeration is effective but may vary on going chemical dosing. It depends on the chemical dosing, right? and if i talk about the oxygen reduction level so in the thermal deaeration it is up to 7 parts per billion and if i talk about in chemical deaeration so obviously it depends on the your chemical dosage okay amount of the chemical dosage and mainly it is given by the manufacturer as well typical application in a large industrial boilers we use the thermal deaeration and chemical deaeration mainly used when the supplementary treatment or smaller system okay now why deaerators is required so as we have understood about the deaeration process okay you are removing the dissolved gases from there okay now let's understand that the deaerator is the part of the boiler package or the steam generating package and if i say when we use the deaerator so it contribute in the boiler efficiency okay but how see understand this the first one is it removal of the dissolved gases when you remove the dissolved gases so what happens that uh, deaerators effectively remove dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide from the boiler feed water reducing the risk of corrosion in the boiler system so what will happen if the it will reduce the risk of corrosion obviously life span will increase right by maintaining oxygen levels below 7 ppb they help prevent the formation of rust and other corrosive compound that can damage boiler components over the time this is the first reason why we should use deaerator second is preheating feed water see in deaerator what we do deaerators heat the feed water to its saturation temperature using low pressure steam okay we provide the steam there i will show you the picture as well this preheating process reduces thermal shock when water enters into the boiler minimizing stress on the boiler materials and enhancing operational stability by providing hot feed water the boiler requires less energy to reach the desired steam temperature thus improving fuel efficiency what is happening that see if this is my boiler and here the feed water is coming now if you are heating this feed water so what will happen that obviously the load on the boiler will be reduced because already your water or feed water is preheat so now the boiler will required less energy to convert that feed water into the steam right so that is the benefit of the uh, preheat feed water okay and it is the benefit of the deaerators when we use the deaerators now it improve the heat transfer by eliminating the non condensable gases deaerators enhance the heat transfer efficiency within the boiler air act as an insulator and its removal allows for better heat exchange between the steam and the water i hope you understood this point leading to more effective steam generation and reduced chemical or fuel consumption then the energy recovery deaerators can utilize flash steam from the boiler blow down process capturing energy that would otherwise be lost so you are utilizing the energy right so it is the energy efficient process as well you can say this recovered steam can be utilized as a scrubbing gas in the deaerators further improving energy efficiency and reduce overall operational cost okay then fifth one is reduction of chemical treatment needs by mechanically improving diso uh, dissolved gases like thermal deaeration deaerators reduce the need of the chemical oxygen scavengers which are often used to treat feed water this is not only lowers chemical cost but also minimize the risk of the chemical related issues within the 
boiler system contributing to overall efficiency and safety and health then last one is stabilization of water levels deators provide a storage capacity for treated feed water because it is in the upstream of the boiler ensuring a consistent supply to the boiler this stabilization helps maintain optimal operating condition and prevent fluctuations that could lead to an efficient boiler operation or operational disruption i hope you got the point what i want to say now this is the kind of the okay which maybe you have seen in an industry if you haven't seen so this is the kind of the blur which you can see here okay this is one vessel and there is another vessel at the top so a deator is a device that is widely used to removal of air and other dissolved gases from the feed water to steam generating boilers right in particular dissolved oxygen in a boiler feed water will cause serious corrosion damage in a steam system by attaching to the walls of metal piping and other metallic equipment and forming oxides obviously so we have already discussed about it right it also combined with the any dissolved carbon dioxide it could see if in with respect to corrosion when it will come in the contact so rust will be form oxides will be form for example ferric oxide and if it will come with the carbon dioxide contact so carbonic acid will be form and it will further lead to the corrosion most deators are designed to remove oxygen down to the level of 7 ppb by weight or less okay so which ensure that the corrosion could be removed now here are the some types of the thermal deators here you can see in the thermal deators mainly which i have seen here your mostly widely used are the tray type deators or the spray type deators tray type means you will use here the trays i will show you and in a spray you spray the steams i will show you that as well then there are vacuum deators and packed column type deators see this is your tray type deators here you can see in this section here is the you are using the tray the feed water is coming from here and in this section the air will be vent and this is your deaeration steam or the low pressure steams comes okay and then your deators goes to the boiler after the preheat okay and here you can read about it completely i have listened about it here in a spray type see here this is your boiler feed water you are spraying here then this is the steam which is you have provided like that and this is one pipe and there is the nozzles okay and sparger you can say right and then this is your pump again your deator feed water will go to the boiler and again you can simply study here about the spray type deator after pausing this video also there are the vacuum type deators also which is used and this is normally used when see deators both all the deators work at very low pressure right and vacuum type deators operate under the reduced pressure which enhance the removal of the dissolved gases right okay there are other types of the deators are packed column type deators very not that commonly used but yes this is the one type of the deators okay this is the one summary summary we can say about the types of the deators which you can simply take the screenshot and pause the video and note down yeah now if i talk about the working principle so the first one is as i already told you in the deaeration process it is like your deaeration mainly works or mainly depends on the two physical law the first one is your henry's law and the second one is your solubility gas solubility and temperature so what is the henry's law so henry's law states that the amount of dissolved gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of that gas above the liquid means what is your solubility okay let's suppose the solubility is this of the gas is directly proportional to the partial pressure in the context of a deator as the pressure above the water decreases means the gas pressure which occurs during the deaeration process the solubility of gas in water also decreases okay because it is directly proportional and this principle allows 
डिजोल्व गैस टू स्केप मोर रेडली फ्रॉम द वाटर टेम्परेचर इन्फ्लुएंस नाउ इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द टेम्परेचर इन्फ्लुएंस द सोलिबिलिटी ऑफ द गैस लाइक ऑक्सीजन डिक्रीजेज एज द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द वाटर इंक्रीजेस राइट आई होप यू गॉट दिस पॉइंट ओके सी बाई हीटिंग द बॉयलर फीड वाटर द रिएटर रिड्यूसेज द सोलिबिलिटी ऑफ दीज गैसेज फैसिलेटिंग देयर रिमूवल टिपिकली द फीड वाटर इज हीटेड टू नियर इट सचुएशन टेम्परेचर विच इज क्रिटिकल फॉर इफेक्टिव डिजेशन प्रोसेस आई होप यू गॉट दिस पॉइंट दिस पॉइंट मीन्स एज यू इंक्रीज द टेम्परेचर द सोलिबिलिटी डिक्रीजेस ओके नाउ बाई हीटिंग द वेन यू हीट द बॉयलर फीड वाटर सो डिटर रिड्यूसेज द सोलिबिलिटी ऑफ दीज गैसेज एंड देन इट सिंपली रिमूव द डिजोल्व गैसेज ओके एंड एज आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड अबाउट यू द ऑक्सीजन स्केवेंजर्स विच वी यूज ओके दिस इज द केमिकल्स मेनली विच यूज एंड दैट केमिकल कुड बी लाइक इट कुड बी योर सल्फाइड बेस्ड स्केवेंजर्स इट कुड बी हाइड्रोजाइन बेस्ड स्केवेंजर्स इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द ऑर्गेनिक बेस्ड स्केवेंजर्स नाउ इट्स इट ऑल्सो डिपेंड्स लाइक वट इज द प्रेसर ओके एंड मेनली दीज आर डिपेंड्स ऑन द प्रेसर दीज आर द प्रेसर सेंसिटिव एज वेल राइट now the design standards for deator design is here simply you can see the design of deators is governed by several key standards and guidelines that ensure safety efficiency effectiveness in removing dissolved gases from boiler feed water the main standards include asme asme boiler and pressure vessel code section 8 division 1 and ace international standards corrosion control then hei that is heat exchange institute standard performance specification and cibo guidelines operational best practice so these are the some design standards for the deator design in our next video we will definitely discuss about the how to design the deator how to select the deator what are the select and selection criteria for the deator design mainly it is it is a vendor package okay but still we will discuss about it okay so if in this video you have any doubt about the deation or and the deation process please let me in the comments box so that's all for the today's video thanks for watching till then keep learning thank you